Welcome to another edition of Digital Marketing 101. I am Solomon Timothy. Today's question that we're going to cover is what type of marketing does my company need? It's a great question. People ask me all the time, hey, what should I be doing for my company? What kind of marketing do I need? I know you're a marketing expert. You've been doing that for a long time, but tell me more about what I should be doing right, for my company. It's a great question. In fact, I wish more of the people would do exactly specifically what is going to help them get to their desired results than just kind of doing everything they see, right? Oh, I've been told I should do more social media marketing, so I'm going to do some social media. Or I've heard that blogging is good for me, so I'm going to go ahead and create some blogs, right? So doing random activities and expecting predictable results is unheard of. And I'm super excited to answer this question for you. So if you're wondering what kind of marketing should I be doing, maybe you're a brand new startup, maybe you've been around for a while, people can recognize your brand, maybe you're a small market, a small segment of the market can recognize you, maybe you built some brand equity, or you might be a very large brand, right? You could be around for a long, long time, you spend a lot of money building brand awareness, and that is a different strategy than somebody who's just getting started. So I'm gonna give you a couple of different types of things that you can be looking at in this video so that you can get a better grasp of the type of marketing that your company, and now this is specific to every single company. Here at 1IMS, we work on a one-to-one -one basis with the business owner, the stakeholders, the marketing folks at every one of our clients to understand exactly what they need, right? What are they trying to accomplish? Working backwards, are you trying to go from $5 million to $10 million of revenue? Are you trying to be a leader in this specific niche, in this specific segment of your bigger industry, right? Wherever that is, or are you trying to capture a lot of the demand that already exists because you've been around, you built a lot of awareness, you have a lot of equity. I want to capture that, right? I want to get all that back, all the investment that I had. So we work on a strategic plan for every single client and we work on executing this. And so in the execution side, every single client gets something different depending on where their problems, their challenges, and also the type of company that they are and where they are in that growth curve. First of all, for you, you have to determine what kind of a business you are. Are you a brand new startup? Are you an existing company with five years or six or 10 years in existence? You've become a semi leader, but you're trying to be the number one spot or you've been around for a long time. That's the first question that you want to ask. So if you are a brand new company, never ever existed, you just started from your garage or whatever you want to say, you just put a new office together and it's you and that's it then you need to work on brand awareness. You need to get the word out that you exist. You wanna get as many people in your niche to understand that you exist. So your job should not be, hey, I wanna generate $10,000 of orders a weekend. I wanna get you know, to $100,000 in three weeks. No, your job is not to run a bunch of Facebook ads to prove all of these other things that you're trying to prove. Your job is to make other people aware that you exist. You know, let me tell you in simplistic form, if I'm trying to buy something, right? If I wanted to buy something, I have to first know there is a company that can offer my solution, right? If I don't know about the company, how can I take them to my next step of decision-making is consideration to decide if I want to do business with this company or do I want to do business with another company. In a buyer's journey, the most basic part of a buyer's journey is awareness. People have to know that you exist. Awareness, the next stage is consideration. People have to be able to consider you versus somebody else. What are the alternatives to what you provide than whatever else exists in the marketplace. So that is the second step. And finally, is decision. So as I mentioned earlier, if you're wondering as a brand new company, how do I get people to buy more of my stuff? How do I get them to buy my stuff versus somebody else's stuff? You're trying to go all the way to the bottom of that decision making process. You're trying to get somebody to know you exist, consider that you're better, and buy from you all at the same time. Think about it. And you shouldn't do that because the fact of the matter is there's other companies that are in the exact same space that you're in. They've been working on their brand awareness campaign. They're working on creating better uh, differentiation and right, you know, not just brand awareness. Hey, we're better. Our positioning is this. We specialize in that. And then there's you. 
So your job today, after you listen to this and watch this content, is to go build as much brand awareness, brand affinity, anything that can make people recognize that you exist. That is the number one job. And once you do that and you continue to pound that, hey, this is what we do and here's who we help, here's who we are, here's how we specialize ourselves. And once you do that, then you'll start to capture some of the people that are interested in what you have to offer. Like me, if I wanted to buy your product or service, I will have to know that you exist. And then I'll say, you know what? I remember seeing an ad. I remember somebody reaching out to me. I remember seeing their post on social media, whatever that is. Now there is something that I can attach to. I remember that company, I remember they were in blue, it was orange. I mean, I speak just like that. It was this thing, you wanna create that, right? You wanna create that something in their brand so that you can be a remarkable brand. A brand is something what other people can think of when they look at your website, when they look at your company, when they look at your logo. Wow, they do X, Y, Z. They should be able to articulate what you do, not you, what other person can say, based on what they see is how you build a brand. So now that you built the brand awareness, that's what every single company needs to be working on. Every, even if you're the biggest of company, work on brand awareness. This should always be brand awareness. Now going into the next level, you've been around for a little bit. Now you wanna capture more of the demand that exists in the marketplace. You've built a lot of equity. I would move to the next stage, which I think in simplistic form, so people can understand that you provide the same service maybe as bigger companies in your niche, right? You provide a significantly better quality service, but people just don't know that. So you built the awareness, so now you have a lot of traffic, maybe you have a lot of awareness, people are filling out your form, people are getting in touch with you, they're watching your webinar, downloading your ebook, you've developed traction, you just wanna really grow this thing, so work on creating content and creating um, sort of the next level, which is capturing a lot of the demand that already exists in the marketplace, they already know you exist, they're filling out your form, coming to your webinar, your job is to build that, your job is to go middle of funnel and show that you are better than somebody else comparison content, differentiation, us versus them, things that you can do, testimonial, case studies, really, really pounded in somebody's head that you are better. So your job is to be something for somebody, not you're gonna to try to be everything for everybody. A lot of companies in the middle of the sort of road, they're not growing because they're trying to do everything. They think that trying to be everything, I wanna offer this service, this service, this service, I wanna offer all those things at the same time and that's how I'm gonna grow my revenue. In fact, it's the opposite. In order to really get traction, you need to focus on what you're not going to be doing. Who are you not going to be serving? Instead of adding more industries, get rid of industries and say, we're gonna niche down in this industry. We're going to be a specialist in this area. We're gonna be the biggest and the best for this type of companies. And it's not revenue of the company, it's the type of problem they might solve. Maybe you're trying to convert customers from using a legacy solution to something more modern. So your job is to go find anybody that's using that solution to move them to this one. Maybe your job is to convert them from doing something that they've never done into a new process that just you, you know, your company started. So your job is to really help those people know that you exist and convert them. So this is a really, really big part, you guys. Focusing your attention on what you're not going to do is gonna give you more results in marketing than trying to do everything for everybody. So the next part is the biggest part, which is the conversion part. This is where everybody would like to be. Everybody wouldn't wanna just make wake up in the morning and say, hey, I wish people would just go buy more of my stuff. I, would, I wish people would just go submit more form for request a quote, request a call, request an audit, a visit, whatever it is. Right? If you're an attorney, you wanna get more people to call you as a consultation. If you're an auto mechanic, you want people to show up and you can tell them exactly what's wrong with the car, fantastic. And I wish the same thing as well, except you can never get somebody to the decision stage without having awareness, consideration that leads to decision. I know it's super simplistic, but at the end of the day, nobody ever buys a product or service that they've never heard of. I've never bought anything that I've never heard of. Number two, if you look at the companies that you admire so much, take a look at their advertising. Sometimes they're not trying to push you another product. They're pushing you the brand, their differentiation, 
why you should put your trust and your faith in that company, how they're going to deliver better results. Maybe their warranty is better. Everything they are going to tell you is not so much about the product, but to give you in your head, imprint in your brain that they are better for you. All right. So when I say Geico, you think about 15% or more on a car insurance. Like it's that simple. They've put it into your head that that's what they do, right? If I start naming different things, different brands, immediately, my employees do this all the time, immediately they say what their marketing slogan is to me. They always say that. Why is that? It's because the same process I talked about, I will never buy car insurance from Geico if I had never heard of them. Would you agree? Would you ever buy it from a company you've never heard of? How would you do that? You're not going to consider them. You wouldn't consider anybody that you don't know about. Typically, you never buy from somebody or a company you've never heard of. So similarly, you want to work on building as much awareness as possible, as much of it in the consideration and in the decision stage. I think it's really, really critical. So think about it. This is your awareness bucket. This is your consideration bucket. And finally, this is the decision bucket. And most of the time, everybody's focusing their attention on one thing. Your marketing doesn't work because it doesn't drive more sales here. Your marketing doesn't work because of X. Your marketing doesn't work because of this. I didn't get 18 X, you know, in my ROI or 805% return on my investment. That's what the challenge is. But most companies fail to spend time and energy here. We should be building as much awareness as possible so that people can actually take you in that journey to consider you versus somebody else, some other solution. That is so critical. And this is the part that a lot of companies don't get. So hopefully you got some value out of this mentality of getting out of this to developing a brand, developing a long-term marketing strategy that's going to give you so much more ROI in the long run than few thousand dollars of sales over a weekend or three weeks or two months. If you're doing marketing, you should already know that marketing is a long game. It is a very, very long game. In fact, companies, they outlive people, right? That's why you build a company. You'll die and company's still going on and wouldn't you want your marketing still to be there? So think about that. I think it's very, very critical that companies understand that you are not trying to do a three month campaign and then not do marketing for the next three years. In fact, if you do that by the end of those three years, you're going to be non-existent because new companies have come and taken over all that you have done, right? So that is a huge challenge. So you want to work on all three. In my opinion, you should be developing brand awareness campaigns all the time. You should be developing things to help people understand why you are better than somebody else or a better alternative. And then finally convert the people that are ready to make that decision because of the fact that they know you exist, they know you're better. And then finally getting conversions is easy. This is the part that's the easiest of all because they just know it's the right thing. And let me tell you, price doesn't even matter when they've decided to work with you. Most of the time you think that you have to lower the price of your product or service because the market can't bear it. In fact, if you spend more money building a bigger moat around your brand, building a bigger brand, they'll be happily willing to spend so much more on your product or service. This is why brand name companies can charge more is because of the fact that they're well known in the marketplace. You're willing to spend more because of the fact that you're thinking you're getting a better product. In fact, there's probably better products for less price. But the fact of the matter is they've never built that awareness. So sometimes you won't even want to go into a market just because there's huge players, right? There's huge players. So people are like, I forget that it's just too competitive. I'm not going to be able to win. Exactly my point because they've dominated it from an awareness perspective. People know that company, so they're not even going to go right? they're not even going to mess with it. Similarly, that's exactly what you want to do for your business. So hopefully you've gotten some value out of what type of marketing should I be doing and thinking more from an awareness decision, right? Consideration. All of these things are really, really important. Hopefully you got some value out of this video thinking more from, Hey, I got to build a huge awareness. I got to build a huge following. I got to get a lot of people to know that I exist before I can even fix their problem. And then consideration. I have to be better 
then the best solution, the only way you can be better is if you niche down on a very specific problem, a very specific challenge, a very specific segment of the market. You can't serve everybody, you can't be everything to everybody, and then you're not gonna get the conversion because people do not know that you could honestly solve the problem. Imagine all the services that you wish to be good in and you have to spend 10 or 20 or $30,000 per service a month to grow. Imagine that. You're automatically gonna know, man, I don't have the money. I can't scale that. So guess what? Focus. The biggest thing that you can do in your marketing for your marketing to get better is to focus. Focus on serving a few people, a few, a small, tiny niche, but do it better than anybody else. That's what we always say underserved market like I looked at it it's a very underserved market and I'm gonna go in I'm gonna work on it most entrepreneurs are not or investors are not looking to invest in a generalist company they're investing into a specialist a special niche service they know there's a market for it it's underserved a lot of people are spending money but they're not getting the solution that they need boom you find that spot they're willing to invest similarly small businesses sort of run into the trap that they got to do all these things. They got to be good at everything. And then you wonder, how do I even start my marketing campaign? And you look at your budget, you look at what you're trying to accomplish. Doesn't even make sense. And then you wonder why isn't it working? Similarly, if you think about that and then get rid of all the noise, trying to be everything to everybody doesn't work. Focus, 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 and you'll develop exactly who you need to go after. And those folks will know you are a really good solution to their problem and then you can say hey we're better than them because of this it's because we specialize we do this we do that think about that differentiation exactly how you're going to be the leader in something 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 very specific you can't put that on your homepage if you're not the leader in all of these things that you're trying to do but once you become exactly who you say you are and the market that you're going to serve you can become the leader and then you start making more money than you ever thought and all of a sudden marketing just clicks Voila, and this is kind of what, what I said in the beginning, that we look at every single client and their business and we figure out what they need to do. How do they need to shed some things? What are some trade-offs? What are we gonna get rid of to build a better company that is going to serve exactly the type of clients you're trying to serve and what challenges that they serve and we can create content, create awareness, generate the demand and capture the demand and how do you go from maybe where you are a million or two or five or ten to a hundred or two hundred or five hundred whatever you're trying to be it's all strategy at the end of the day right it is figuring out where you're going to win and doubling down on it and it is unique for every business you cannot do your marketing based on what your neighbor's marketing company is recommending for them you can't do what you think you can't do it based on a blog you read you need to be very specific and intentional about what you're going to invest your time, your energy, resources, money, and your team, everything. All right, hopefully you got some value out of this video. If you did, click that like button. Please leave a comment. Consider subscribing to this channel. Turn on the notification and leave me a comment about your ideas. What kind of marketing do you think you need? I'll be happy to answer them. We have an entire team here at One IMS that is dedicated to helping you solve your biggest and your huge marketing challenges that whatever size might be, right? Whether you're a $2 million company or a $20 million company, we have the team, the resources, the technology to help you do that. So hopefully you got some value out of this video and I will see you next time.